a quote from the next show. If you can't handle the bottom, you're not ready for the top. We're going to meet someone that's been both on the bottom, at the top, Michelle Powell, next. This is a dash of grit. Recipes for success from courageous leaders who overcome challenges and build great things. Now, podcasting from Spire to leaders in local communities like yours, here is Brian Leflock. And let's get cooking. I can't wait for you to meet who you're about to meet. I met Michelle Powell at a uh, an event for Athena Recognition, and she was a past winner. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. She did a video story, and I watched the video story, and I said, I've got to meet this person. And I got myself up out of my chair. I walked right over to her, waited until everybody else that wanted to talk to her talked to her, and said, I want to know about you because I hear grit here. And I am thrilled that I did so. Michelle Powell of uh, of Let's Make a Difference, Medina, former Athena Award winner. Welcome to Dash of Grit. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. I can't wait to hear and to have the audience hear your story. And uh, but th- because I can tell that it's it's probably one of the most real stories we've ever shared on Dash of Grit. And I think you know that. And I think we're going to share that. Before we do, you are doing an amazing job in what you're doing. You're making a difference in kids' lives and in the community. And I'd like you to talk about that. Tell me what success means. Tell me about Let's Make a Difference, Medina. Ah, success. You know, Brian, we, you know, I never really get to brag because I always try to stay humble with that part. But, you know, when you um, do something for 20 years and it has not been easy and to look back and see um, the success stories, I mean, we are really, really, um, have made a difference here in the community. You know, we started our Let's Make a Difference program What 2000, really didn't know what direction we were going in. Um, Suddenly that just kind of evolved into, you know, an organization from there, we kind of start learning, you know, what the needs were for the community. And I think um, that was important. I would, you know, go out and, you know, talk to every parent and just kind of, you know, try to learn and see what the needs are. And once we try to uh, understand those leads, we try to work towards, those needs and learning those needs, we've made such a huge um, difference. And one of the things, um, the summer program is that self-esteem, you know, um, talking about more about self-esteem because I came from Union Square. So I understood what it was that the kids were um, going through. And my job was to, how do I get them from here across the street? And that's what Let's Make a Difference has um, been. We've been that bridge of, um, I hate to kind of say, for the kids from poverty or at risk or undeserved, uh, undeserved kids, because in some kind of way, we're all that. Um, mm. My job is to transition these kids into being successful and know that they um, that they are successful. And I believe Let's Make a Difference has done that. Um, looking back over the 20 years, um, we have so many success stories. You know, me and Carol Andrick, we were excited to, um, someone made an anonymous donation for us to get to start an after school program didn't know what we were doing, um, had no idea. It was rough at first. I um, walked out of the school. I said, Carol, I don't think I could, um, you know, do this program. I didn't think I could do the program anyway, because Carol Andrick was a teacher of mine who identified me as special, special ed. Um, yeah. And here you have a teacher who identified you as special ed and you all come together and work and try <laughs> to run a program. How are we going to do that? Um, and that has been such a, such a blessing, um, Brian, you know, with that, with, you know, with that program and how many children that we have graduated. So it's an after school program and it's for kids. Go ahead and, and paint a picture for me of these, of these kids. Who are you serving? What are their needs? Um, let's, let's not worry too much about stereotype. I want to make sure we talk about what you're doing and the impact you're making in Medina. Tell me a story about what you're doing there. The needs is, and like I said, you know, Brian, the need to me is, it's always love, you know, that's, you know, love. And with that comes our, you know, you have um, kids are failing in school. Yep. Um, you know, kids are struggling with homework. I've seen that, that, you know, our kids are, you know, failing with reading, you know, our, uh, there's a percentage of our kids. I heard like 80% of our kids um, can't read. Our kids don't get those opportunities to go out and enjoy those times of, you know, sports. They don't get to see mom come to the game and, you know, cheer them on. They don't get to, you know, go to the movie theater, you know, unless our program comes and step in and offer those 
opportunity. You know, so those are the children, um, single home. These children are, you know, coming from single home. You know, you have mom trying to do the best that she can. You know, you might have a mother who has, you know, four kids. And we all know each kid has a different need. And when you have a kid that is really um, struggling, you know, me as a single parent and my mom as a single parent with five, you need someone to help. And yep. these parents don't talk to everybody here in Medina, you know, at all, because we always feel like you don't understand. Um, and that's what I love about Let's Make a Difference is going, I'm able to go in there in the home, sit, and you all see me now, but I, I've been there, you know, I know yeah. what it feels like, you know, not to, you know, not, you know, what it feels like. I just want to be able to offer those, opportunities that hindered me and my yep. family as a child yep. and to be able to give to the children so they can um, succeed as well. And so let's talk about that because I think it might be the easiest way to share what you're doing and the difference you're making is let's talk about you, Michelle, and, and, your, and your life going through and the things that you had to <laughs> overcome. Well, that's what this show is. This, <laughs> this is when you get stuck and you have to show some grit and, and you've shown some grit over your life. And, and I think you're a microcosm of the folks that you are serving now. Um, you, you, you lived it and now you're helping it. And so give us a picture of what that looks like. Talk to me about grit, what you had to overcome, uh, to get where you are right now. Grit. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know, you know, the way I got started. Um, you know, like I said, really, you know, a sad case, I ended up getting evicted, um, out of Union Square, you know, not having a place to go. Um, you know, at my, at, 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 when I say at the bottom, Brian, I was, you know, I was at the bottom and, yeah. um, I heard a message, you know, something about today. Still didn't know what I was, you know, going to do. I just wanted to give children, you know, hope. I wanted to go back in and make a difference to the community that I had messed up. Um, went back, you know, during those years, it was fun. You started out, um, didn't know what you were doing. I had over like 60 sometimes, Brian. I had like 100 kids, but I had friends. It was fun, you know, and we were just, we were just doing, you know, there was no structure. It was just showing up, giving love. And giving food. And then the structure parts start coming in. Um, the board start coming in, you know, an attorney um, helped me, you know, get the paperwork and everything together. But um, in the process, you know, we still didn't know what we were doing and things were going smooth. And then um, you hit a bump in the road and people don't understand, you know, I'm still trying to do this program. Also being a single mother and yeah. trying to raise my two kids. Um didn't really know a lot, Brian. I'm still coming out the street. So I'm struggling. Um, you know, how do I uh, pay my bills to next, next, you know, the next month, you know, is my life still going to, you know, be on and stuff and, you know, trying to keep all that, you know, hid and, you know, a secret because I'm, I, 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 I want to make a difference, you know, for these children. And then I do believe that Brian, one of the, um, I think one of the hardest things for me is being accepted. And yeah. I think that's what our children, you know, are going through now. Um, you tell know, me about that, Michelle. Is, tell, tell me about, yeah. tell me about why it's hard for you to be accepted. I mean, you lived through this stuff who better to take care of things, but what's going on in your head? Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, you think Medina, you know, I grew up here, I went to school here, you know, I was a cheerleader, um, seven years, um, you hear, you know, I had great, you know, friends. We always knew there was prejudice. Um, but you know, we, you really never did, you know, deal with that part. Um, but, you know, as I got, you know, older and, you know, began to start running the program, um, I, I always felt like there were always people who thought that I wasn't qualified according to what their standard looked like. You know, here you have a, um, a black woman, <laughs> you know, yep. woman, you know, I got two strikes against yep, me yep. and you're you, three strikes. You grew up in poverty. Um, and then here you rise to this position is now you're running a a program, you know, where you, you no degree, you know, at all. And I think people look like, she don't know what she's doing. You know, she can't put this together. You know, you can't cross this. And um, isn't she that same one, you know, who mother was this, who father was a, you know, drug dealer. And, you know, people looked at everything that was around me, but they never seen me. And I think that was the hardest thing I dealt with, um, you know, some of the things I heard in the community, some of the things that I, you know, um, people said, and I got to the point, you know, Brian, where there were days I would come home and I'm like, I can't do this. Yeah. You know, it's like, I quit. And um, 
And it's, it's like, every time you ask me about that, it's like, God, I've overcome that. You know, it's like, why are you still crying about 20 years? It's like, you have did so, you have did so much, but you still have that pain inside because yeah, you get all these awards and, you know, people pat you all on the back and you're doing this, but it's that night season. It's those season where you come home at night and my son says to me, Mom, every time you come home, you cry. You know, my kids are like, why are you in this program? You don't even get paid enough. Mom, we're struggling. You know, they don't even give you enough to even pay your, your bills. Yeah. You know, so it's like, but you give so much to a program. You're, you're everything in your house. Go without. It's like me, me and my kids have sat here when our water was turned off. But I still showed up to let's make a difference. Why? What drives you to get up out of all that and come make a difference with let's make a difference? What is that? Love. Love. And when I think about the LMAD, it's for me, it love made a difference for me. Here I was so at the bottom. I was so at the bottom. And for God to pick me up and to still love me after all the ugliness that I've done, after all the stuff that I caused to families in Union Square to those children, how dare me to be like that to another group of people? And I'm just like, if I didn't do you like that, and if I didn't treat you like that, why do me like that? You know, it's like, see my character, but not my disability. Mm. Um, and it, that was hard. You know, it was those nights where, um, God, I quit. Yeah, I quit. I can't do this anymore. It's like, I don't see your hand. It's like, you know, you, you, you think, you know, you, you're a CEO, you're a founder. You look at all these other people that are CEOs and founder. And it's like, why am I struggling? And I worked so hard and I made a difference for this family. And I made a difference, you know, for these children and I'm making it different. But when does it come a difference for my home? When do we not, when do we not struggle? Right. You know, when do those blessings when do they fall here? And I know God is, you know, and I see those, you know, blessings. Um, you know, my children are doing phenomenal. Um, I thank God I've raised some, you know, two children who went to college. Um, my young boy um, who I adopted, you know, adopted him from prison um, when he was two days old. You know, that was another hurdle, you know, for me. So it's just been it's been rough. It, it's not been easy, but um, I look back on 20 years and I'm still here. You're still here. And and Michelle, that's one. I take a, a second just to let you know, when I started Dash of Grit, it was because of people like you and not just, you know, evicted or at the bottom. People, we all have different levels of, of issues and we're trying to make something better. And the cross the street, and I want you to talk to me about across the street, across the street, it looks awesome. Like everybody's got everything put together. They've got the white picket fence and two and a half kids and the nice dog and the trophy wife. And then they're all good. And you sit over here going, why can't that be me? And those people across the street have issues too. Yes. And people will, people will look at you and they'll say, wow, look at the difference that she's making. And yet, and they'll be inspired by you, Michelle. And yet they won't realize how hard it really oh. is. And so what I hope is that when people hear your story, that they'll say, wow, if she can do that, if she can show up every day and go through these trials, I can do it too. And that's what I want people to, to understand. I, I, you, you, you showed me, talked to me once about, uh, why the chicken crossed the road and, it, and it's, and it's a, uh, it's a story that you tell your kids. And I think you're inspiring grit and children. And I, can you, can you talk to me about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, you know, coming, you know, we were the first family that lived over there in Union Square. Um, single mother couldn't read, you know, my mom, I had to take care of the home. And um, when you, you talk, you know, when you're told that you're dumb and you're, you'll never amount to anything and, you know, you're only good for just staying in Union Square. I, I, I knew there was something different about me. So it's like every time someone would say that, I would work harder. And I was the type of child to say, OK, I am going to go to library and I'm going to self-talk, you know, teach myself. And 
um, I, I could hear this book. It was my favorite book in school. And I didn't know why, um, about why the chicken, you know, crossed the road. And I'm yeah. a, I, I do believe I'm a visionary. And of course, my mom couldn't read it to me. But in my mind, it was like, well, why did the chicken, you know, run across the road? And I'm looking at this chicken. But I, I hear there's everything, you know, even today you hear the chicken, you know, people like you dumb chicken, you know, baby, <laughs> you know, get out the road. And there's just all this stuff that is going around the chicken, but it never bothered the chicken. Because we talked <laughs> about that, right? It's so yeah. hard to get across the road. That chicken ought to be just be run over. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm like. And I'm like, <laughs> but in my little mind is because when you're a child that's in poverty, you don't want to think about the situation that you in. You want to think about the good. And I wanted to see something good. I want to I want to know what it was about getting across the road. And my mom said I would sit there and I'm like, I'm getting out of here. I don't want to live like this. But she she didn't understand. You know, she was all like, girl, get your butt back in there and get my mm. house clean and you take care of the kids. You know, that was all. And I was trying to tell her, like, I don't want to live like this. You know, they said I was stupid, and dumb and I'm not dumb. I know I'm not that dumb. I'm I'm going to better myself. And I'm like, I don't get across the road, you know, just like this chicken. And, you know, all the little baby chicks that came with the chicken was my brother and sister. It's like, I'm going to get, you know, all of us out of here. And getting across the road was because when I became a cheerleader um, and, and, and went to middle school, um, there were those angels. Um, there were those teachers who spoke into my life and began to say something. And um, I'm like, wow. And, you know, all my friends had nice things and they were, they get to, they were able to go to Washington, D.C. We were never able to go to Washington, D.C. And I just didn't understand what was, what was different. What, what did they do and have that we don't have? So I'm, 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 I'm searching, you know, how can I get to where you all are? And it was education. It was just, it was, ed- it was education and people being determined and not, it's not what they call you. It's what you answer to. I knew who I was. I, I knew I wasn't dumb. I knew I wasn't slow. You know, I knew all of that. And I'm like, I'm going to show you all, but showing you all, I showed myself that I can overcome whatever anyone said. And I got across the road. Yeah. I got across You know, I got across the street. Now I'm across the street and I know I got across the street and was this easy? No. Yes. I almost got hit by a car. Yeah. yeah, I almost got hit, but I made it. Anybody who takes a chance does. Yes. And now I'm on my way to the highway. There you go. There (laughs) you you go. I'm on my way to the highway because 20 years, God said it's over. And, um, you know, my life is always based on. Um, God, I do believe God called me, and, and and that's why I do believe that I can overcome um, some of these challenges because of um, where my where my faith is. And um, God spoke to me um, the other day and spoke about twenty years, and never in my entire time of reading the Bible. And I look up meanings for everything, and twenty means completion. 20 talks about in that 20 years, as God would say, I was testing and I was trying you because some people do it for a show. Some do it for money. And I didn't do it for that. I did it because I and genuinely I care and I love those children. And now I do believe that everything that I went through in those 20 years, God is saying now it's new level and there's new height. And if you can't deal with the bottom, you're not ready for the top. So now I look at that 20 years like, devil, I didn't, you didn't take me out. I'm, I'm here and I'm ready and I'm ready to go. I'm excited for the next chapter, you know, for let's make a difference. Folks, did you hear that? If you can't deal with the bottom, you're not ready for the top. Ah, <laughs> gone. And I knew there was going to be some gems in this show. <laughs> Hey, Michelle, there's something that that I, I've heard about. It's called imposter syndrome. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that, but the idea is that we are all living this life and doing this thing and driving our cars and making our businesses work and bring it in, right? And, and yet in the inside, we're just like, I just hope no one ever finds out that I'm a complete fraud. You know, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's going oh, on. I, oh, yes. I'm interested. I, I think you have a little of that. You talk about that a little bit, but I'm the specific question I have, are you harder on yourself or are people harder on you? You mentioned both. Which holds you back, yourself and that little voice, or people who won't give you a chance because of your two or three strikes? 
I would say people. Um, and I think I'm past, I'm, I'm, I'm past, you know, I'm, I'm past that now because I did do some counseling, um, some minister, you know, under some things um, of holding the, that issue in and holding that pain in yeah. um, to where I got to a point to where, um, and if I could be honest, I would say a nervous breakdown. Um, I, would, I, I was at that point, Brian. Yep. Yep. Um, because I let people say what I've tried to overcome for so many years. Um, and no one never let me talk. No one, no one knows that when I walk into a school, um, the people that's supposed to work with me were the same people saying, who does she think she is? She's stupid. She can't read. Um, when you walk into something and they, they don't want to sit with you and it's something that you started and they sit there and they don't include you, you in your okay. game. You know, um, report certain things that has happened to me and and cry to people and and, and say what has happened. And nobody cared. Mm. Nobody cared. Nobody listened to me. And and, and I'm and I'm crying and I'm like, what did I do to you guys? I was respectful. I'm never I, you know, you can't find anything bad about me. There's a vision that God gave me. I know what these children need. They don't need your book. Your book is not taught for our situation. I walk this life. I know this life. I know what I'm talking about. Listen, I didn't, God didn't give me the program because I had a college degree. He didn't get it. He gave me this program because I show up and I care and I listen to those children. That's why. So now I, I walk now, Brian, with my head up. It's like, no, more. I'm not being disrespected. I know who I am. I know the difference, you know, I'm making and I love those kids. And, you know, if yeah. you're not riding with me, you left and it, out. And it's not about you so much, is it? Just in, in, in listening to that, it's about those kids. You are not going to let anything come between you no. and bringing those no. kids across the road. Man, I love them. Man, I love those men. They're special, man. They're special, man. It's just like, and, you know, we talked about me trying to work on that play um, about you don't see me. Man, you don't see them. I see them. I love that. I want to yeah. get into their head. I want to, I want to, I want to, I give a hug every day. And that's what the L for let's make a difference is what separates us. It's love. Every morning, Brian, when they come in, I'm hugging everybody. Like still today I'll run because I just need that hug. Like when I'm going through those bad times in my life, it's like, they're like, why are you here? Miss Michelle It's like, because it's you all it's your love. And because you're so innocent, you're so pure, you're so natural. And I, I, I just, I, I just love those. I love those children. Um, and like I said, we have made such a huge different. Um, a lot of people don't know it. It's because it's our kids. Yeah. Our kids don't get talked about. And, you know, no one knows that, you know, me and Carol Andrick, unless me and Carol Andrick talk about it, you know, why does the community know that we took broken kids who the, the people say, what are going to make it? put them in a program and almost three to 400 kids have graduated out of a program with a white woman, a black woman who you all said was special ed from poverty and a middle-class woman come together and graduate almost that many kids and only two to three kids have not graduated. I think I know what I'm doing. Yes, you do. <laughs> and I am glad you're doing it. What's the future look like? What do you need? What, where do you need to show some grit here moving forward to help these kids even more, to help more kids? What, what's your vision? What do, you, what do we need to do to get you uh, even, even more ingrained in, in making such a difference? I think we need um, more people to come in and understand and, 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 and listen. And, you know, I'm like, can you just take my vision off my yeah. head? And, and put it on, you know, paper. And that's what I loved about being at your seminar. Um, take this focus off Michelle. It ain't, a, I don't never want, it's not about Michelle. It's about what we're doing, what we can do and what we want to do. And, you know, with the pandemic and everything, you know, we're back up uh, running our after school program is running up at, you know, we came out of the school system. We're at Cup Cafe, we're working with Tim, um, which I think that is just the best relationship because Tim is a, um, it's, it's Christian. <laughs> and I know that if anything goes wrong, I, I, I have Tim support there um, spiritually and um, he is such a great friend. So we are blessed to be able to go in there and host our um, after school step up 
program. One of the reasons why I call it Step Up, um, because I want the kids to understand that there's some things that they need to step up to. Um, so hopefully um, we do have a new director. Uh, she's doing a great job, but uh, there's some things that we still kind of have to line out. We're definitely looking for volunteers, you know, to be coming in and kind of help us with some things that we see. There's there's truly a big need, um, not with just the children, but the family as whole. Um, and we want to try to focus more on the family as whole. You know, you can't get to the kid without getting to mom. And, you know, hopefully we could help mom. You know, I want to be I want to be the one to come out of um, the classroom. I'm, 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 I'm not that teacher, but I want to be that lady that goes in and be able to sit down and talk to mom and say, look, you can get across the road. I got across the road. But these are steps. You know, and just teaching them um, about some of the things that I've learned. You know, I didn't yeah. know all this education. I didn't know how important reading um, was. And, you know, that's what we're trying to do. I like to bring on some other segments, you know, uh, elements to the program. Um, but we we need people. And, yeah. and to get people, Brian, we need funding. We we truly, we need funding. I have a new president, Crystal Magileos, and my gosh, she is She's extraordinary um, and, and, and not only extraordinary, she's powerful and she's too powerful <laughs> because she has everything. Um, she has the ability, but she can't give us um, all of that to our program because of all the things that she do. So one of the things yeah. we have talked about is bringing in an executive director, someone who can do that um, daily, you know, day to day program. I can't do that. That's not what I want to do. I'm not your administrator. I'm not the one who's going to sit down and write your letters. No, I want to be able to go out and say, why to invest in Mountain Dew? <laughs> my favorite. Why invest in us? That's yeah. my part. Why do you want to join Let's Make a Difference? Because we're making a difference, and this is how we're doing it. And um, so one of the things with funding, we'll be able to um, bring you know more people on you know the board, but we're always in need um the volunteers always in need of volunteers. And so when someone wants to help you with funding, when someone wants to help you with volunteers, when someone wants to take this program into their community, they want to learn more. Maybe they just want to learn about you and your story. Um, Michelle, how would someone reach out to you and find you? We do. They can, um, you know, of course, we're on um, uh, Facebook. We have a, mm -hmm. uh, our Facebook page. And then our website is L M A D Medina, M E D I N A. Dot org. Um, and that's our website. And if anything they want to know is about me or the program, everything's on there. But also there's an opportunity um, for volunteering, uh, a volunteering opportunity. And also there's a place on there like if people wanted to donate, we do have like a PayPal set up or they could send a check to our P.O. box, which is 241 Medina 4425. Okay. 4425A. Very quick word for Aspire, the sponsor of this program. Folks, you just listened to an organization leader, a community leader that's looking to build and, and do great things. And and uh, and she can do it on her own and you can do it on your own, but sometimes you need a hand. And if you need some marketing help, we're Aspire Marketing. We can help you with strategy and, and creating some marketing plans to help get the word out. If you need us, we're at SpireAd.com. Michelle, I want you to know that there's a huge difference between you and me and maybe between other business owners who think they've got it all figured out. And that is when you're flat on your back crying that why won't it happen for me and wanting to quit, people like me would quit. People like me don't know what the bottom looks like. You've seen it and you're not going to ever let it stop you. And it's not just about you, but you're not going to let it hit the kids that you're responsible for. And that's why you keep going. And, and folks, if you're listening right now and you're thinking about quitting, you have to reach deep down to your heart and you have to know, do I have that kind of passion to keep going? Because you probably do. You probably care too, but I've never met anyone that cares as much as Michelle Powell. Thank you so much for being so vulnerable and sharing your story. Thank you. Amazing. Michelle Powell on, a, on Dash of Grit. Folks, we do this once a week. And, and I keep saying that, that uh, you know, I, I hope it inspires. This time, I know it has. I hope that someone will reach out to Michelle, offer a hand, offer a dollar, offer a heart, and see if we can make a difference in kids' uh, lives, not just here in Medina, but in, let's just take this everywhere, right, Michelle? Yes. Let's just build yes. this up. <laughs>
this is let's this is uh what is this this is dash of grit and we do this once a week you can find us where you find podcasts on youtube on the dash of grit website uh and um and until we meet again next week uh stay gritty stay gritty like michelle get her done see you next time this is a dash of grit recipes for success from courageous leaders who overcome challenges and build great things 